Greetings everyone and welcome back to Sorcery Part 3 The Seven Serpents um, Last episode we actually uh, didn't do that much but we meet the queen of the lynchbacks and she gave us stuff to beat the water serpent and now we are on the road you follow an old road, night falls. You should find somewhere safe to sleep. If you keep going through the night, you will be weaker for it. Especially after so long walking with an empty belly. The line of this grand white road is all but invisible now. The fishery ovens, a short distance to the north from behind you. A voice says, Excuse me. You turn around to find the road deserted. There is... No one inside in any direction. Huh, do I get nuts? Where are you? You call. There is no reply. The cold wind whistles around you. The plains feel suddenly far emptier than a moment before. The fissure splits the earth. It is as though this plane were a plate dropping in a celebration of an analand ma marriage. <laughs> the canyon looks impossibly white. Looking east along the road, it continues across the plain for some way, towards the impossibly high mountains of the Badubak Ridge. You continue to walk through the dark. Hmm. I, I, I kind of expected to rest. This is the thing I'm wondering about, this. Because I feel this... I see there is few of those. Oh, here's another one. I think I seen there is one here. So I feel this is sort of important. That might be just like big telescope thing, maybe. You follow the old road. The moon moves slowly across the sky like a lightless eye. Away from the road on the northeast, the curious stone tower stands alone overlooking the canyon. Oh, this is a tower then. You leave the road and walk across the desolate plain. You approach the stone tower until you stand at its base. You walk around the tower, looking for a door, but find nothing. Perhaps it is simply hard to see in the dark. But feeling the surface, you do find something else. A glyph of some kind. Attach it into the stone. It is an almond shape. Perhaps a teardrop. Perhaps an eye. What if I... Use open lock spells. Hmm. But I can't use my magic so much. It's like I didn't even leave the first zone. And I use magic like five times. And if I only remember... Dope. This is the one. Took me a while to find this one. You craft the spell, expecting the tower base to split and reveal some kind of secret door, but nothing happens. Perhaps there is simply no way inside. Oh man, I wasted one stamina. I could try how, but... Uh, I, I'm really concerned. But I don't want to waste any more of my stamina, so... Ah, okay, let's see. Reaching up to the start, you create the magic and steady voice begins to speak to you. It tells you there is no way inside the tower. Only a way to reach its summit, but that's now, it's not the right time. The voice fades. You are back by the base of the shadowy tower. Okay, so I waste two of my stamina for nothing. I guess we could try to rest because I need to rest. There is no shelter near the foot of the tower, but you find a spot on the leeward side to the curl up. Under your cloak, you have not yet eaten today, but you have no rations to ease your hunger. Ah, uh, that sucks. You lay back and try to forget your troubles. Your dream quickly become nightmares. There is a rope around your neck, growing tired. The king of Analan stands before you, cursing you for your failure. You were sent for the crown. He curses, but instead you wander at the wilderness like a fool. You try to protest your innocence, but you cannot speak. 
You cannot even find words to breathe. You reach up to your throat and claw away the rope to find it has swelled to be as thick as your arm, as though submerged underwater. Then one end of the rope splits and bites at your hand. It is no rope, but a snake. Your eyes fly open, a despite snake is wrapped around your throat, breathing its miserable breath into your eyes. Wait, did I wake up? Is it... Oh man, no, it is... A f I think I wake up that way, that, that, that this is in fact a snake. Okay, I didn't have a real fight in the wild actually. So, I'm gonna try to play it safe. Oh, fuck me, finally. That was, that was rough. You won't be able to see it, but I tried like five times. And I, if I win, I had like three stamina or four stamina. I mean, I, I got five stamina now, but uh, I guess I need it all with it. I don't think this guy will be so easy to beat. To the spider snake is now afraid. You push through the air with your blade with a final hurt felt sight. The desperate snake falls to the ground and promotely expires as true, simply giving in. You suddenly feel much, much better. Well, not really, I lost three stamina. Let's continue. You gasp with relief as you clean your blade on the skin of the split snake. Something falls out of its belly. <gasps> it's a key? You pick up the key. Wipe it clean and put it into your pack. It is unlikely you'll ever find the lock to it open, but if you do, it will be most pleasant surprise. The cold night closes in over you and you try to sleep. Southern Tower Bay, day 2. During past day you lost significant stamina, <laughs> minus 13. Change, change to using the broadsword, plus 1. Reached the pit of the backlands and found seven new clues. Seven new clues? This is a, this is a lot. You wake as the fierce rays of the sun across the plain, feeling stiff and aching. You struggle to your feet. In the daylight, you can see the tower surface is covered in thick grip wheat. Can I grab it and go up maybe? You walk a full circle of the tower, hoping to find a doorway, but there is nothing to see. Sides are made of solid stone, if ne indeed it is a tower. Cringing your neck and squint against the sun, you try to make out what the gleam is. Some kind of brass fitting seems to jut out over the side. Strange to see worked metal and stone of here. Wasn't this place supposed to be barren? Okay, I don't think I can I can get up by any means now. I don't have stamina to try. Oh man, this is. It started so well, I had so much health and now I'm, I'm, I don't. I can't really do anything here from what I see. Hi, maybe I could use big spell. Could this help me get up? Or is this tower too high? Let's try it, I guess. You wave the constellation into a part around you, quickly swelling to the height of a tree. Shake the tower. Huh, oh, that could, that, that could do. But I feel I need to go up first. You stretch your arms around the tower and attempt to climb it up, but you cannot find a decent grip on the stone. Any cracks or indentation in my once have had are now far too small for your fingers to fit into. From here you have a much better view of the top of the tower, which seems to support a brass conception of some kind of long tube which rests on small well on the edge of the tower and presumably could be passed around its perimeter. It spells phase and you shrink. Damn it, another stamina wasted. Let's just go from here because I, I did nothing in this episode and I'm like 15 minutes in. You step away from the tower base, it's mystery unsolved. The metal gleamed at its top, uninvestigated. South of here the old road runs from west to east across the plain. You have still not found Shadrach the hermit. If he lives out here, he must have shelter of some kind. You walk on across the dusty plains, 
rocky outcrops break the ground here and there. And as the tree rises you are soon walking on bare stone. The air stirs a little, still cold but at least fresh. From somewhere close at hand, a strange whistling noise catches your attention. The sound is coming from the other side of the large rock. It seems steady enough to sound of a every running wind. <gasps> you peer around the rock and strange sight greets your eyes. Whether a localized curse or a freak, whatever effect, you cannot tell but. Hovering a short way above the ground is a swirling twist of air trapped in a cove, formed by the rock. Hmm. A small fly buzzes over the head of the whirlwind. A moment later it's sucked in and disappears from sight. <gasps> Could it be some sort of portal maybe? Is this funnel alive? Something about the way it moves suggested. A shuffles around the rock enclosure as though injured and looking for a way out. Foul thing, you begin. Are you indeed a creature? The wheel ring kicks a short distance up into the air as if leaping, then settles back down again. A reaction to your voice or merely a chance of a movement. Suddenly, from somewhere above you, you hear a voice. Oh no longer, I bring a message. Hmm? You look up and to your right, scouring the rock face until you spy a small boy leaping from a stone to stone like a goat. I bring a message from Shadrach the Hermit. What message? You call back suspicious. The fire serpent. He's following you. He's going to attack you while you sleep. Shadrach will see it. The boy has scalped halfway down the mountain sign now and is just above the whirlpool in the rocks. He is just about to jump. When will this happen? Soon! At the night! As he falls, you see him pallet through the air towards the whirlpool. Look out! You cry. But it's too late. A moment later the boy hits the whirlpool and vanishes. Well, that was... That was eventful, I guess. Okay, so we're gonna... Oh, amazing. We're gonna get attacked by goddamn serpent. We don't have stamina and we don't have food. Brilliant. You, you lean towards the whirlpool. Are you alive? Can you hear me? But the strange vortex eats your word and replies with nothing. Let's just move on. <laughs> you move away from the whirling air. Whatever it is, based on what happened to the boy, it is probably best left unexplored. The path leads into two directions from here. You found one new clue. I wonder what this is. You make your way over the rocks and boulders following the trail where you can and scramble the rest of the way. As the morning moves on, the wind begins to rise. You pause to rest in the shadow of a large rock, spire, that sticks from the dirt like a cloth through clove. All around dusty plains stretched north and west, eastwards a range of mountains rises, shadowing the sun. The rock is a single shattered spire, perhaps once part of the mountain range to the east or perhaps driven up through the ground by some geological quirk. At the base of the rock is a mouth of cave. You approach the cave, with one hand on your blade. The cave appears to go back some distance into a pitch blackness. Someone seems to have scratched a message into the rock inside the cave. It is only just legible and must be ancient. In the thin sunlight falling into the cave you can make out the ancient scratched message with some difficulty. Stranger, I'm waiting very long ago. Summon you. Call my name to the skies and I will. Adra. Hmm. Adra. I guess we don't... What if I... <laughs> if I... If I... If... Wait, I can make... I can make a spell which... Uh, which causes light without... Without losing stamina, because it needs Sun Jewel. You cast the enchantment and the Sun Jewel in your pack begins to emit a brilliant blinding light. The message of the K Wolf suggests like a calling out the name, but what name should you call? Shadrach, that would fit. You cry the name across the plains, 
The echo of it seems to set over a distant avalanche. The ground begins to shake and rumble and you struggle to your knees. The very earth is moving as though it was splitting. Or merging back together, you reach down to the steady yourself only to find that grass is growing between your fingers. What? Holy shit! You pick yourself and elbow to your feet, feeling sick and unwell. Everything around you is the same, but everything is different. The rock has two spires for one thing. The cave seems smaller and darker and in a fire pill bit into the scrap of its mouth, a fire is burning. From inside you hear the gentle sound of singing. What just happened? So this is not night and day cycle, this is some kind of witchery. You stop and listen. The singer is a man with a voice like gravel moving over ice. He sings in a language you do not recognize, but the melody seems to soothe your soul. You approach the fire. Ah, uh, I feel like this might be dangerous, but I need like food. Ah, uh, let's try my luck. You draw your sword and step towards the cave mouth, but you only make it a step before the cave occupant steps out to greet you. A white smile on his face. A smile which turns to a frown when he sees the broadsword in your hand. Oh, put that thing away, he sighs. I, I have been expecting you. I know your mission, of course. I know all about you. And you know about me, I hope. My name is Shadrach. What do you know about me? I need to talk to you. You begin. I believe you can help me. I believe I can, he nods. I know you joined me here from Kare. Tell me, how far is that city? It stands still. Shadrach nods deeply. I watched an army of mass goblins cake the cliff armed with swords and axes, he says. There should be a smoke rising at the horizon, but I see no such thing. He grabs a handful of dry grass from the ground and tosses it into the fire pit, where it blazes for a moment into a flame. He appears to change topic. I must warn you that no one from Adalant has ever crossed the backlands along and survived. What are the dangers? The land is cursed, Shadrach replies. The very rock and earth here are lost. Things become unstuck and you have now become unstuck yourself. Hmm, that's... that's interesting. Can this curse be lifted? Shadrach appears to consider this for a moment, then finally replies. No, most likely not. He demonstrates with the fingers as he speaks, twisting them together. The old world and the ancient world have grown together, like trony bushes. The journey through is the journey through the other. This is sort of confusing. You take the serpent ring from your back and show it to Shadrach. Do you know what this is? You ask. Shadrach accepts this thoughtfully, turning the item over in his thick palm. I have never seen one, he says. But I would say that it was a serpent ring. There are only two or three of these in this ancient world. Or just one. I going around and around, you can never be sure. So it's valuable, he nods. Most probably, then he hands the ring back to you. <laughs> Try the wizard of the mountain, he adds. Keep from here to the trees. Unexpectedly, Shadow stumbles, he smiles at the weekly. How did this curse come to be? The land was cursed by the Archmage to be forgotten, and so it has been. And so it will be. Not long now, and then all you see will be gone. Only timeless desolation will remain. But why? You demand. Because of you! Shadrach replies sharply. The Archmage punished the whole lot to make a trap to kill you before you could kill him! He is a dangerous enemy. He is quite desperate. Oh man, I can see that. So the army knows I'm coming. He knows you will come. He does not know you are here now, but and yet you must keep it that way, if you can. Shadrach is shivering slightly now. His face is pale behind the ruddy beard. What do you know of the seven serpents? You ask quickly, keen to learn what must while you can. The serpents are the most terrible, Shadrach answers. I have often seen them, but 
they had no more snakes. Do you know of their legend? Tell me, Shadag nods then, cocks sharply. It is said that thousands of years from now, a few years ago, for you, perhaps, the Archmage of Mapang fought as slave a mighty Hydra which dwelled in the caves of the Hyde Zeman. So formidable, a foe was this creature that the Archmage took its seven heads back to Mapang, where he used his dark arts to resurrect them as seven winged serpents. They became his personal messengers, his assassins, his force into the dark places. I see. This is actually pretty interesting plot. How do I kill them though? Shadag nods. A good question. Uh, Gage Serpent has a spirit of sustain that grants a great power, but also powerful weakness. Discover these weaknesses and you may be able to defeat the serpents. Shadag cows and shivers. Friend, he murmurs, I wish I did not have to go, but I must. If you... I am too close to circle. He gets his stick and pushes himself up to his feet. Where are you going? I go to rest. He sighs happily. I will plant my feet into the earth and lift my arms as bridges and drink in the sunshine for as long as there is water in the soil. Soil? <laughs> Time to live. He raises his arms to demonstrate loves. Almost tits over the kitchens himself with the stick and begins to cough violently. There is, he uses, not much time. But I have much to ask you, Shaddag nods. We will meet again. This is my intention at least. He waves hand at his cave. I have left one more thing for you in there. Travel well. Remember, when you walk through the fields of Ishtara, you are safe from the serpents. But if you do not return to your own time, you will never defeat them. Um, I kind of get it. How can I travel between these lands? Look to the beacons, he answers cryptically. If any have survived into your time, they will hold a little of our ancient light still. There is uh, one to the north of you, at least by the river. Go there. Ditching over, he places his hand on either side of your head and you feel a grand lightness entering your body. That dawn he returns and stamps away the grass. Oh, thank fucking God you give me stamina back. I love you, man. Thank you. I, I think we need to let him go. I don't think that will be like... Uh, he leaves heading west across the plains and feeding into the hazy dust that hangs in the air. You mouse on what you have seen. It seems there is more to the backlands than there first appeared. You are left alone by the cave, cave mouth once more. Yeah, he said he left me something into the cave. Look into the cave again and this time find a strange horn hanging from a hook on the wall. It is ordinantly carved from the strange twisting shell with the hide of a leader. It is a gale horn, one of a very few of existence. He lifted it down with a great care. Uh, should I just blow it right away? I don't think what it does. You place the horn to your lips and below a note, it is clean and well pitched and makes the air stir with the echoes. You silently thank the hermit for his gift. You make your way back to the old road that runs past the rock. To the north you can catch a glimpse of a tower Shadrach mentioned that seems now to be covered in a grand ivy. West you notice a young tree that it surely wasn't there before. The light from the sun jewel pulses twice and fades. Oh, this is so interesting. Oh my god. Oh, this is pretty cool. This is really, really cool. So I think, this is, does this make this game like twice longer because there is like two dimensions to this place, sort of? Will they change each time I, I gonna say his name? Well, we shall see. It surely started getting way more interesting and I was afraid I, I didn't do much progress, but I'm glad I recorded for longer than I originally wanted to record and get some mod stuff done. So yeah, I hope you enjoying this series still. It definitely started getting more interesting and I'm gonna continue to record it as much as time led me with a job. And yeah, I'm gonna see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you did enjoy it and I'm gonna see you in the next video. See ya! Mm -hmm.